The Salvation Army CBS. Located in Conception Bay South, Newfoundland and Labrador, we welcome you. Join us as we worship together through music and song and a message from God's Word. Now, let's go live to the Sanctuary of the Salvation Army, CBS.
scripture this morning. John's Gospel, chapter 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. And as soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law. And according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from, he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? And Pilate says, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. And from then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away. Take him away. Crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. But Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. And the soldiers took charge of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty
He's humbled people. People whose hearts are stirred today on this Good Friday just to realize your sacrifice given to the world in the form of your only son, Jesus, who came to give his life as a ransom for many. Lord, would you help us this day to be ever grateful? Would you, Lord, set within our hearts afresh the meaning, the great meaning of what this day is all about? And Lord, may there not be one person in the hearing of my voice not come in contact with the one who came to gave his to give his all. The Lord may they respond to the message of salvation to know that the plan of salvation has been accomplished. You've done all that's needed. Now it's up to us to respond. Lord, may there be a response. May there be people come to Jesus today. There is a fountain filled with blood. It still flows today as fresh as ever to cleanse your people from their sins. Help us, Lord, to spend these moments in reflection, may you stir our hearts, dear Lord. Thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. He didn't come down.
tears and humbles me just to know what Jesus endured for the likes of me I don't deserve it you don't deserve it but his love his love for you and for me brought him to the cross to fulfill the mission for which he came to save my precious soul and to save yours so knowing that reality this morning on this good friday 2024 how can we not sing these words oh i love him since for me he bled and died. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love him more than all this world besides. Tell him you love him this morning, church. Lift your hands in worship. And if you're not serving him, I want to tell you this morning that the altar is open. This place of prayer is available. And you can come this morning, in this moment. Tell him you love him by surrendering your life to him. Oh, I love him. Oh.
And so the soldiers took charge of Jesus. And carrying his own cross, he went to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross, and it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. And this happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, and so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Heaven awaiting me 
my soul redeemed through his death at Calvary. He was wounded for our
Amen. Jesus, on that last Thursday, weeping in the garden alone, he asks for a different path. In the depths of fear, his asking turns to pleading. And he is in all points tempted as we are as he seeks the will of God. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And then it is Jesus in chains, taken where he does not want to go. During that long, restless night in captivity, sleep escapes him as he thinks about his hands, his feet, the frailty of this human body of ours, how we bleed. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Brought before judges with power of life and death. There's no justice here for him, and he doesn't look for it. He knows the path that he is walking. They slap him and they call him a blasphemer. Stripped and whipped, mocked and spat upon, he is despised and rejected. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Carrying his own implement of execution, a heavy beam resting on his shredded shoulders. The uphill climb to Golgotha is too much, and he falls. A stranger picks up this burden for him, and on they go. The many people who are following, they see him stretched out naked on the ground, and each blow of the hammer reflected in the flinching of his whole body. The humiliation of us all is upon him, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And Jesus looks in the eyes of the men bent over him, saying, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. But the soldiers know what they're doing. They've done this before, many times. And so they hoist him up, his whole weight hanging on his feet, his hands. All this to the sound of jeering from the crowd and the taunting of the chief priests and scribes. He saved others. He cannot save himself. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Hour passes hour, and with the drip, dripping of blood, and the rising agony of muscles cramping, the struggle to breathe, the sky grows dark. In the fog of pain, he sees his mother and the women who supported him watching along with the disciple he loves. Words are spoken. They're gasped out. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. This is why I love him. He
this is why I love him. You can be seated. We're going to be blessed in this moment as Peyton sings for us the beautiful Easter tune, Amazing Love. How can it be? Bless you, sweetie.
Thank you, Peyton, for blessing us with that beautiful singing this morning and those beautiful words. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? And then to echo the words, you are my king, Jesus, you are my king. The truth of Scripture is this, Jesus was born to die. Jesus was born to die. Whenever he became conscious of who he was, Max Licato wrote, he also became conscious of what he had to do. The cross-shaped shadow could always be seen. The screams of hells in prison could always be heard. You see, Jesus was born to die. He was born for ministry. He was born for mission. And that ministry, as you know, was to preach, to teach, to heal, to deliver, to make an impact in this world like none other has ever made such an impact. And then to die, take it on himself, the sins of the world, your sins, my sins, that we could be saved and that we could inherit eternal life. And this explains the determination on his face as he turned to go to Jerusalem for one last time. And he was on his death march, as it were. And he says these words, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He focused his eyes on the cross. He gathered up his courage. He straightened, he strengthened himself for his journey that would lead him to the cross. He knew what awaited him there. He knew he had to go. He knew he had a mission to complete. He knew that your salvation and, and my salvation hung in the balance. He knew you and I had to be rescued from sin depending on it, the cross. And this explains the confidence in the words of John's Gospel 10, 17, and 18. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again no one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. So call it what you wish. Call it an act of grace. Call it a plan of redemption. Call it a martyr sacrifice. Call it the plan of salvation. But whatever you call it, don't call it an accident. It wasn't that. It was not an accident. It was anything but, well, church, it's Good Friday. But what's good about it? Good Friday was not so good. We like the story of the conquering king, but we cringe at the thought of a suffering servant. Yet that is what Jesus was. He was a, a suffering servant. Bef before he became a conquering king, he was a suffering servant. We're reminded of this fact on Good Friday. It's a day of darkness. It's a day of shadows. If ever there was a day of shadows in Christian history, it was Good Friday. 
It was a day when all light, all hope seemed to be extinguished. The candle of Christ, the light set on a hill, was gone. The disciples were left confused, bewildered, lost, hopeless, feeling a sense of defeat. It's a day of shadows. It's a day of of darkness. What happened that day? The Bible says his disciple and friend Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He was arrested. He was taken to the house of of Caiaphas, the high priest, which was an informal late-night meeting of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council. They plotted to put Jesus on trial. They were looking for evidence that would justify putting him to death, but they could not find any. And finally, the high priest demanded Jesus, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus replied, I am, and you will see me, the Son of Man, sitting at the right hand and coming back on clouds of heaven. Then the high priest said, you've just heard his blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? What is your verdict? And they all shouted, He deserves death. Crucify him. Then they spat in his face and they started to beat him. And after he was convicted in their mock trial, they took him to Pilate because they did not have the authority to put anyone to death under Roman rule. They falsely accused Jesus of treason, disloyalty against the Roman Empire for claiming to be the king of the Jews and for urging people not to pay their taxes. However, Pilate knew Jesus wasn't guilty of any crime, yet the mob wanted him crucified. So he washed his hands of it. And the crowd went about doing what they had set out to do. And at the time, crucifixion was the cruelest form of death reserved for criminals and slaves. Jesus, the Son of God, was flogged and and ordered to carry a cross that he would die upon. And after he was nailed to the cross, he was given a crown of thorns and a title, King of the Jews. The cross was placed between two other men who were being crucified that day. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross and they left him to die. Put a sign on the cross to mock him that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Jesus struggled on the cross for six hours. And when he eventually gave up his spirit, darkness fell over the land. And then at noon, strange things began to happen. The sky sky grew dark for three hours, and Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then he died. The curtain of the temple was mysteriously torn in two from top to bottom, and there was a great earthquake. It was Friday afternoon. The Sabbath would start at sundown. Jesus' body was taken down from the cross, was wrapped in strips of cloth, and placed in a tomb. When I read the Scripture account of the cross, whether it be Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, I vision the pain and the agony that Christ must have went through. I hear the screams of the crowds. I I possibly hear the laughter of the Roman soldiers, and I hear the sound of a thud as the cross hits the ground. I see the sight of soldiers tossing a tired, beaten man on top of the cross. And perhaps the most ear-shattering sound of all The hammers hitting the nails. Really? We want to call this good? We want to call this good? 
in all the chaos of the story. I focus on Jesus, the man on the cross, and I cannot help but ask the question, what did he do? What did he do to deserve that? And the answer is nothing. He didn't deserve it. And what really hurts when I look at this story is this. What I did, I put him there. I want you to think about that this morning. He did nothing to deserve it. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. I'm faced with the fact that I've not done what is right and I have sinned. My shortcomings separate me from the eternal bliss of a relationship with God. And all throughout the New Testament, I'm reminded that I need to have a relationship with God. But the only possible way that I can is through this horrendous act of sacrifice. It's all through Jesus. Friends, let that become real to you today. I wish that... The price of one's life had not had to be paid because I could not keep my covenant with my creator. But here's the reality and here's the truth of the gospel. It was the only way. It is the only way. The way of the cross leads home. Sin cannot be ignored. It must be atoned for. And the answer is for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I ask my team to return. God does have the answer. And it's simply God's path to restoration that's on display here as we think of Good Friday and all that happened at the cross on that dark day. The drastic had to happen in order for his plan to be fulfilled as we journey throughout our life. And so I guess, looking at it from that perspective, Good Friday is actually Good Friday. It's an example of tremendous love. It tells me that no matter who I am, whom I am or, or, or what I've done in life, that I'm loved. My life would have been over before it started if not for the Good Friday. I would die in my sin and rebellion and doomed for hell and no hope of heaven if not for Good Friday. And so I think of the beautiful words penned by Hillsong Worship that say this. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame in love, you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb. Seated on the throne, I crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious, high and lifted up, Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. When I hear the sounds of nails, it reminds me of whose I am. My desires should be replaced with the desires and the love of the one who suffered for me. The selfishness that once took over and control of my life should now be buried with his death and I should look to the one who gave his all for me and follow to love and to serve him. Jesus shouted in victory, it is finished. The battle to liberate us from sin was now over. He died to set the earth free from bondage so we could know the glorious liberty we have as children of God. 
Let's not miss it. And as we gather around the cross this morning, let's allow the Lord by his spirit to speak into our hearts. Let us survey the wondrous cross which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. May we make a commitment to him this morning as we find in that final verse of this old hymn that says, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And if you this morning are yet to do that, to step into that relationship with Jesus, to step into that walk with him, that journey with him, then I encourage you this morning, this Good Friday, you would ponder afresh what the Almighty has done through the giving of his son Jesus that we would be willing to surrender our life to the one who has given his all for us. Love so amazing, so divine. Will you stand? As we sing in reverence this morning, as we sing in reflection, when I survey the wondrous cross, when I survey somebody here that would like to come and just kneel at the cross there's plenty of room up here or to come and stand around as we reflect on the cross with the crimson linen representing the blood of Jesus we want to come and we want to make a fresh commitment to him today or maybe for someone, a brand new commitment. Come and do that. The altar is here. Cross is here. I give you that opportunity as we continue to sing. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast. God bless you. Come as we sing. Forbid.
to move among us. We'll linger. Let's go to the key of G, musicians. So I'll cherish the cross of Jesus, that we would all make this commitment to him today, I will cling to the old rugged cross, I will cherish the cross, I will respect the cross, I will glory in the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that verse again. Let's go to the first verse. Rather, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Yeah. 
precious Lord today. We stand amazed in your presence. To know, Lord, that you would love us so much. Lord, thank you. Our hearts are are bursting with thanks and gratitude today. We don't any longer have to be lost without hope. Jesus came because of that sacrifice. Lord, we just want to thank you for purchasing our salvation, for paying a debt we could not pay. You've now restored hope to the world. And now, Lord, our prayer is that the hope would certainly reach into the recesses of the hearts and lives of those that we love who haven't yet accepted you as their Savior. Lord, reach them this Easter season. We pray. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place this morning. Among your people, those online, Lord, we it's just been an absolute moving morning together. Lord, I pray now as we leave this sanctuary, we go on with our day, that we would be careful, Lord, to continue to remember the price you paid for us and what this day represents. And as we go through this weekend with anticipation, knowing that Sunday is coming, we will return with celebratory hearts as we come and we gather again and worship, knowing the end of the story. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go with your people now. Bless us throughout the remaining part of this day. And help us, Lord, to stay in tune with you. Continue to move by your spirit in the hearts of our loved ones. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, make Calvary real to Bless you, church.